So the first thing is the speed of light. Muslims believe that angels are created from light and the angels communicate the affairs of God which they get from what is known as a preserved tablet in outer space. And the speed at which they travel to and from this tablet it turns out to actually be the speed of light. In the Quran, Surah 32 verse 5, it says Allah rules the cosmic affairs from the heavens to the earth. Then this affair travels to him a distance in one day at a measure of 1,000 years of what you count. Hence in one day the angels will travel a distance of 1,000 years according to the lunar calendar because that's what Muslims counted at that time. The belief is that God is saying that the angels travel in one day the same distance that the moon travels in 12,000 lunar orbits. 12,000 lunar orbits or earth days equals the speed of light. Now science shows that. Now the atmosphere protects us is the next thing. So the atmosphere protects earth from radiation and meteorites. Rides. Now this is also portrayed in the Quran 1400 years ago. In the Quran Surah 21 verse 32 it says, And we made the sky a protective shield and they turn away from its sign. The next scientific miracle in the Quran is female bees are the worker bees. So worker bees are actually all females. Now the Quran refers to bees that generate honey as females. So listen to this. In the Quran Surah 16 verses 68 to 69 it says, And your Lord reveal to the bees, build your hives in mountains, trees, and in what they build. Then eat from every fruit and follow your lord's enslaved paths. From its bellies exists drink of different color, in it healing for man. So in Arabic, the word eat or kuli is for females and that's used in the Quran. And the term follow a path is the word usluki in Arabic and that refers to females as well. As also the term its bellies is butuniha and that's also used for females. Emails. The Quran also mentions hearing before seeing. So this is what I mean. So hearing is one of the first senses to develop. Now this is only known in recent history and it's also mentioned in the Quran. The Quran Surah 76 verses 2 it says, We created man from a fertilizing sperm to test him and we made him hearing and seeing. Also the Quran Surah 23 78 it says, It is he who produced for you the hearing and the eyesight and the feelings. But little gratitude you show. So the Quran always refers to the hearing before the seeing which turned out to be the actual order of human development in the womb. Flight comes in at number six. So the Quran is also believed by Muslims to have foretold that humans someday would be able to reach the sky. In Surah 29 22 it says you cannot escape Allah's might on earth or in the sky and you have no protector and no savior besides Allah. Also in Surah 84 19 it says you will ride one layer from another layer. The word tabak in Arabic means a layer in English and from this came certain myths about flying carpets but now the flying aircrafts that go up layer upon layer are what we know today. Also sound waves. According to the University of Washington the original sound waves were not temporary temperature variations but they were actual real sound waves spreading around the universe. Now in the Quran Surah 41 verse 11 indicates this and it says then he directed himself to the heaven when it was smoke and then said to it and to the earth come willingly or by force. They said we do come willingly. So the heaven replying back implies that the heaven had a voice which would mean it emitted a sound wave. Another miracle Muslims point to is the high altitudes affect your breathing. As altitude increases, atmospheric pressures and oxygen levels in the atmosphere actually decrease, which eventually gets to a point where we can no longer breathe. Now, we all know this the higher you go, the harder it is to breathe. Now, in the Quran, Surah 6, verse 125, it says this Those whom Allah wants to guide, He opens their chest to Islam, and those whom He wants to leave astray, He makes their chest tight and constricted, as if they are ascending to the sky. Bones forming before muscles is also another miracle. Apparently the first formation of actual bones happens in the jawbone at day 41 and about three days later that's when the associated muscles are formed. And in the Quran Surah 23 verse 14 it says, Then we develop the semen into a leech. Then we develop the leech into a lump. Then we develop the lump into bones. Then we clothe the bones with flesh. Then we produce it into another creature. Most blessed is Allah 
the best of creators. Number two, now we look at the part of the brain responsible for lying. So for centuries, everybody thought that the frontal part of the human brain was responsible for sight because of course it's at the front of your head. But we know now that the part responsible for vision is actually at the back of the brain. So if you fall back and hit the back of your head, it could affect your sight or make your eyes go cross-eyed. But now science shows us that the frontal part of our brain or the prefrontal cortex text is responsible for forming intelligent thoughts like creating lies. And Muslims quote the Quran Surah 96 verse 16 that says, a lying sinful forehead, which indicates that lying is happening in the front of your head. Now number one, we have planets, stars, and all of the celestial bodies are actually moving. For centuries it was believed that the earth was fixed and the sun and the moon and other planets and the stars and all that revolved around the earth. But an interesting passage from the Quran that the Muslims point to is Surah 39 verses 5 and it says, Allah created the heavens and the earth in truth. He overlaps the night over the day and overlaps the day over the night and enslaves the sun and the moon all move to a pre-recorded destiny. Miracle number 10 is the color of water. Years ago, people thought that water was just transparent. No one thought that the color of water could actually turn black. But scientists have actually discovered a new characteristic of water. At a higher pressure, the water molecules become half liquid and half solid. Now what's called super ionic water forms in higher temperatures and pressures. It's very dark and thicker than, well, water water. And the Quran says that in the heat of hellfire, water actually looks really dark like tar. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah 18 verse 29. It says, we have prepared for the unjust a fire whose curtains will hem them in. And when they cry for relief, they will be relieved with water like tar, which scald their faces. Number nine is the process of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light and energy into energy that they can use. And in the Quran Surah 18 verse 35 it says, and cite for them the parable of the present life. It is like water that we send down from the sky, the plants of the earth absorb it, but then it becomes debris scattered by the winds. Now photosynthesis converts carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and sugar. Most of the water evaporates back into the atmosphere, which the term debris points to in the Quran. Gardens being therapeutic come in at number eight. Reductions in stress, as well as tiredness, depression, anger, anxiety, have all been documented when people actually go into gardens. Engagement with gardens has increasingly been recognized as not only a cost-effective health intervention, but also a treatment or occupational therapy for those with psychological health issues. And this is done with what is called horticultural therapy. Now this statement comes from the National Center of Biotechnology Information. Gardening is beneficial for health, a meta-analysis published in 2016. And the Quran, Surah 27 verse 60, it says, or who created the heavens and the earth and rains down water from the sky for you. With it produces joyful gardens whose trees you could not produce. Now the term bachat means joy or delight in Arabic and that's the word used. So in this verse, gardens are actually bringing joy or delight and since today's gardens are being prescribed as a natural antidepressant of sorts, Muslims view this as a miracle. Next up we have meteorites. So when a meteor enters the atmosphere, the meteor heats up so much that it starts to shine and then the air burns the meteor and poof, nothing is left, right? In the Quran, Surah 52 verses 44, it says, even if they were to see lumps of the sky falling down, they would say, a mass of clouds. So people would think that they're clouds because of the ashes that are left after the meteor gets like and Muslims say, yeah, that's a miracle. Miracle number six is female spiders spinning webs. It's generally accepted that adult female spiders spin the webs while adult males do not outside of looking to mate. This is according to Speely, do only female spiders build webs published in 2019, this year. And in the Quran, Surah 29 verse 41, it says, the likeness of those who take to themselves protectors other than Allah is that of the spider. It builds a house, but the most fragile of houses is the spider's house, if they only knew. Now when it says those who take, 
The term in Arabic is it takata and that's for males now iktakatat is for females and the Quran uses the female version at number five we look at the mountains having roots as well as floating so the highest point of the earth is in the Himalayas at Mount Everest standing at 8.8 .8 kilometers high now this mountain has actually 250 kilometers of deep roots this was recorded in life science depth of Himalayan mountain roots revealed back in the year 2010 now the Quran in two places says mountains as pegs as well as it says and mountains he anchored so pegs are used to hold a tent or something in place and pegs have a part of it above the ground as well as another part that's into the ground and the Arabic word means anchored and this is actually a term that applies to ships floating on water like when they're anchored to land so similarly this is how mountains or other landforms really actually float above a semi molten asthenosphere yeah, Google that term, asthenosphere. Female ants come in at number four. So check this. All male ants have wings. All worker ants are females. And all ants that don't have wings are females. Now in the Quran, Surah 27 verse 18, it mentions this. Until when they came upon the valley of ants and the ant said, Oh ants, enter your home so that you do not be crushed by Solomon and his soldiers while they do not feel it. Now for the word said, Kala is for males and Kalat is for females. Now the Quran of course uses Kalat for females. So if the ants actually had wings, it would have just flown away. However, they didn't have an option in this context in the Quran, but rather they had to go and hide into their home. So Muslims believe that the ant is correctly addressed as a female in this passage, which they identify as being another miracle. Number three, the universe is expanding. So scientists today do not know what dark energy actually is is but they do know however that it exists and it's causing the entire universe to expand in the Quran surah 51 verse 47 it says and the heaven we built with craftsmanship and we are still expanding the Quran also said that everything is made of pairs and today we know that all matter is actually in pairs so matter and antimatter electrons and positrons and and so on and in the Quran surah 36 verse 36 it says glory to him who created in pairs all things that the land produces and their own kind and other things of that they have no knowledge of and finally at number one continental drift so back in the year 2014 the National Geographic published how do we know the continents are moving and this is what they said 50 years ago continental drift was a fringe hypothesis rejected by most geologists today the theory of plate tectonics is universally accepted as true and unifies one separate areas of geology under one grand banner there are mountains of evidence that plate tectonics had taken place in our planet's past now the Muslims point to Quran 27 verses 88 and it says you see the mountains and think they are firmly fixed but they're moving away just like the clouds are moving away starting at number 10 we have the frontal lobe there is a story of an oppressive leader Abu Jal in the Quran to warn him Allah said no indeed if he does not stop we will seize him by the forehead his lying sinful forehead now the question is why forehead well modern research shows that the prefrontal area of the human brain deals with planning aggression and motivation it is a part of the human brain that deals with lying Muslims believe that mentioning the forehead here is intentional in the Quran from there we look at number nine waves in the ocean the central religious text of Islam says this about the ocean that it is covered by waves above which are waves above which are clouds so this means Means that oceans do not just have waves above them well oceanographers while studying water bodies have discovered that the belief that waves only occur on the surface of the ocean is just completely wrong the waves are also present internally underneath the surface of the water these internal waves are created when the lower part of the oceanic body faces an obstacle so the barrier causes disturbance and leads to oscillations the scientific fact coming in at number eight is pain receptors for a long time it was thought 
that the sense of feeling and pain is because of the brain. But later, scientific study discovered that our skin contains pain receptors that are responsible for the feeling of touch and pain. Now, if we look over at what the Quran has said about this a long time ago, we find a passage that says, those who reject our revelations will be cast into the hellfire. We will replace their skins with new ones once their skin have been burnt away so that they can continue to feel pain. Coming in at number seven, we have the cloud formation. The Quran clearly described the formation of the clouds. In this passage, and I quote, have you not seen how Allah makes the clouds move gently, then joins them together, then makes them into a stack, and then you see the rain come out of it? Now this passage, well, it's exactly how science describes it. The small clouds are pushed by the winds and the clouds that are near to each other amalgamate. A vertical updrift occurs at this point and the upper part of the cloud expands into the sky. As a result, various parts of the cloud are raised to divergent points, giving the impression that many clouds are piled on top of each other, which is the stacking. This scientific fact was only discovered in the last two centuries, so the mention of it in the Quran is definitely ahead of its time. Now from there, we look at number six, iron within meteorites. So check this one out. According to M.E. Walnarth, iron is not an element that was naturally discovered on Earth. According to science, billions of years ago, a meteorite struck Earth, which contained iron, and when it exploded after hitting the Earth, our planet got iron. Now, this is what the Quran has to say about this. We sent down iron with its great inherent strength and its many benefits for humankind. So we see sent down iron. The scientific fact of the protection of the sky comes in at number five. The sky shields the earth from sun's lethal rays. We all know this. Now the sun's radiation would have killed off all life on earth if the sky did not exist. It also acts as a blanket wrapped around the earth, keeping it warm from the cold of outer space. If this temperature reached earth, the planet would instantly freeze over. And yes, the sky also protects life on Earth by warming the surface and retaining heat. And the Quran had this to say, we created a protective ceiling in the sky. Despite this, they ignore our science. That's specifically taken from Surah 21 verses 32. The scientific fact at number four has to deal with embryology. Now, this is what the Quran has to say about this. And I quote, we created man out of clay extract. Then we made him a firm fixed drop in a place of settlement. Then we transform the drop into an alaka or blood clot and the alaka into a mudka. That's found in Surah 23 verses 12 to 14. Now the word alaka can be described as a leech, a blood clot, or something that is suspended in the air. According to science, a fetus gets its nutrition and oxygen from the mother. In this case, a fetus is just like a leech that that sucks blood. In the early stages, the fetus stops movement and becomes stationary, just like a blood clot. And lastly, in the womb, the baby hangs by the placenta from the wall of the uterus. So we have various different applications of that word alaka that are applied to the various different stages in embryology. Next up, we have oceans that do not mix. At number three, meeting of two oceans is termed conflux. Now when two seas meet, they retain their individual properties like temperature, color, and density. Now at a conflux, you can see two different oceans running side by side. This is a recent discovery of science. On the other hand, the Quran stated years ago this passage. He released the two seas meeting side by side. Between them is a barrier so neither of them transgress. Number two leads us to something known as the Big Crunch Theory. Now the concept is based on Einstein's general relativity theory and it discusses how the earth will eventually be destroyed. It's a speculative scenario that describes the fate of the universe and explains how the expansion will eventually reverse and the universe will collapse. So 
yeah, not just the destruction of planet Earth, but the destruction of the entire universe. Now, this is what the Quran has to say about this. Remember the day when we roll up the heavens like a scribe rolls up the written scrolls. Now, the description provided in Islamic scripture is similar to the scenario proposed by several physicists worldwide. And for number one, the theory here is the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory describes the origin of the universe. Until about 100 years ago or so, it was believed that the universe had always existed by most people anyways. But Albert Einstein challenged this belief during his field equation study and presented a theory that the universe is actually an expanding force that is growing like a balloon. Now, later, a mathematician and Belgian priest proposed that the expansion must have started from from a dense initial point. Well, the Quran says this. Do the unbelievers not see that the heavens and the earth were once a closed up mass, Ratkan, which were opened up? And that's found in Surah 21 verses 31. Now the text's use of the word Ratkan alludes to darkness and a closed up mass. This is how the universe must have appeared before the Big Bang. 